The sun rises straight out of the sea to shine on Sapelo. It sends the ghost crabs scurrying for their refuge in the cool sand. It wakes up the oyster catchers. For them, it's another day of looking for the perfect nesting spot. The cormorants in formation strafe the meeting of the waves and the sun. And it sheds light once again on an island that is bathed in history. The Spalding Plantation and the slaves raising their crops of indigo, rice, and long staple cotton. Howard Coffin, who was the big wheel of Hudson Motors, owned the island and improved it. R.J. Reynolds did even more to make it a paradise, the paradise that it is today. Vacation spots for Presidents Hoover and Carter and a score of governors. Now the island is home to a very special breed of people and in the care of Georgia's Department of Natural Resources. You have to love it to live here. The residents are one big family. They have to be. Wives of the island's caretakers have to be either very understanding or love it too. I'm lucky enough that my wife feels the same way about it. I guess we're both a couple of hermits. <laughs> but uh, we enjoy it. You have your disadvantages because you don't have uh, access to come and go like you want to, when you want to, but we get by. Jim Evans and Vonnie and their daughters Summer and April do more than just get by. They spend their days working and learning. They tell me when they built old Ironsides, the shipbuilders came to Sapelo to select a length of live oak for the bends of the bow. The live oaks, hundreds of years old, cover the island. There are loblollies and slash and longleaf pines. There are palmettos and laurels and ilex vomitoria. Well, historically, the Indians used this as a tea. They made a tea out of it and uh, out of the leaves. It's real bitter, and it would make them vomit. <laughs> It, I, they say they used to purge, their, purge themselves of their sins before the ceremony by making a tea out of this stuff and getting it all out of their system, you know. It's got a bitter taste for sure. Yeah, it does. Hope it purged me of my sins. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it, though. We drive on to the Tabby Ruins, the remains of the first African Baptist Church of Sapelo built by the slaves of Thomas Spaulding, out of piles of oyster shells that had been left by Indians who lived on the island first. And then we go to meet Jim's family. They live in a house that was ordered in the 30s by Howard Coffin from a Sears and Roebuck catalog. The house was built by the numbers. Daughters Summer and April usually run to meet their dad, but cameras stopped them this time and turned them shy. Vaughnie is inside, fussing over breakfast dishes, undone. And why not? It's only 8 o'clock. Jim, a little sheepish because he didn't call Vaughnie in advance of our visit, swings the children in the backyard. No sign of your duck, huh? I reckon he's been trying to hunt a hen after that owl got the hen we had before. Vonnie goes to her sewing. Before we leave, Summer shows me her shells. Could I buy them if I paid a quarter and two pennies, I asked? She would give them to me, she said. We go on to the Reynolds Mansion, the place where presidents and governors and businessmen meet. The state rents it out to pay for its upkeep. It is awesome, but there is more history here to see. And we go on to Hog Hammock. Not so fancy, but the home of 75-year-old Alan Green, deacon of the new First African Baptist Church, and best basket weaver this side of Africa. He weaves with native Sapelo grasses and speaks a dialect that you only find here. Who did you learn from? My granddaddy. And who are you going to pass it on to? My grandson. <laughs> nobody else. Nobody else but my grandson. Before we leave, Alan Green makes me promise to tell the world his church is having a homecoming April 29th. Young people who have left the island for jobs did not let Sapelo leave their hearts. And they will be back, he says. If they are alive, they will be back. There is one store on Sapelo Island, Ben Johnson's store, the only place to get a beer or a cigar or good conversation or ribs, Sapelo style. Ribs that fall off the bone. No sauce, just seasoning, says Ben. The recipe is in his head, and that's where it stays. And finally, it's time to leave the island, the way islanders leave it, daily, aboard the Queen. The Queen can haul 150 passengers. Daily, it takes 40 schoolchildren to McIntosh Academy and picks them up at night. On foggy days, Captain Just Tracy like Walker it, keeps like his it. eyes glued to the radar scope. It's the only way to get to the other side, to Meridian. Walker left the island twice, but he came back because he told me it's the best place to live and raise a family. 
There's no drug problem, no law. People know everything about you. Your tragedies are their tragedies. A death in your family affects them all. An illness is big news and brings help. If you visit Sapelo and come from Meridian on Captain Walker's boat, he will likely tell you this. I tell people, usually when they come down Meridian docks, you know, some of them sometime a few minutes late, and I wait on, I say, well, your biggest problem is uh, just hurry up. If you catch the boat, park your car, leave your problem over there, and when you come to Sapelo, when you get back to Meridian dock, you pick them up. Some of Walker's passengers no doubt will meet their troubles on the docks in Meridian on the other side. It's for sure. They didn't leave any behind on Sapelo.